listeners today, you are a part of history because you're tuning in to the very first Livingstone College podcast. Welcome. I'm Kimberly Harrington, Director of Public Relations at Livingstone College. And in the studio today, and who you will hear from momentarily, are Livingstone College President Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins Sr., 12th President of Livingstone College, who will have a conversation with Dr. Orlando Lewis, Vice President of Student Affairs. To those of you who are new to Livingstone College, we are a historically black institution in Salisbury, North Carolina, which is about a 45-minute drive from the metropolis of Charlotte. We were founded in 1879 by the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church to educate the descendants of freed slaves. And 143 years later, we are still thriving and remain relevant and resilient. Livingstone College is also the birthplace of black college football. The first game was played on our front lawn in 1892 against what is today Johnson C. Smith University. To learn more about Livingstone College, visit our website at livingstone.edu. Just minutes ago, Livingstone College cut the ribbon to its podcast cafe, which is where we are broadcasting from today. The Podcast Cafe is the first of its kind in Rowan County and is believed to be the only one among HBCUs in North Carolina. The Podcast Cafe was made possible with the assistance of a Home Depot Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant that is spearheaded by the Division of Student Affairs. This innovative space includes three soundproof podcast cubicles and a control room all ready for podcast broadcasting. Without further ado, Dr. Lewis, Vice President of Student Affairs, will help you get acquainted with our president, Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins, Sr. Thank you, Ms. Harrington, and thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for taking the time out of your busy schedule for being here uh, for this particular podcast, uh, uh, History Making Event here. And uh, Dr. Jenkins, you announced your retirement last month after 16 years of service at Livingstone College. You are leaving the college in a better position than you found it. Talk about the accomplishments of which you're most proud during your tenure here at Livingstone College. Well, first of all, let me say how proud I am for this podcast uh, station that we have established here. I'm excited about it because we are one of the first in, in Royan County and the first perhaps in HBCU in North Carolina to have such a podcast broadcast station. So with that, I'm thankful, and I'm thankful for the, all of the people who worked to make this happen, including uh, Home Depot, who provided the grant for this construction of this podcast. And so I'm excited about it. Now, getting to your question with regard to what I'm most proud of, I'm very proud of the fact that the Board of Trustees saw in me the capabilities of helping this institution not only remain relevant, but also to make sure that this institution could meet it, meet the goals and objectives that were set forth in the mission of this institution. With 143 years, uh, we are still relevant, we're still resilient, and we are making the kind of changes that are necessary for us to be able to take our students where they are, take them where they need to be, so they can command their rightful place in the global society. I'm most proud of the fact that the board allowed me to bring my experience having been president of two other institutions prior to coming to Livingstone, to bring my experience of those working in those institutions to this institution and giving it a, what I call, holistic learning environment where we were able to look at making sure that we're not just dealing with the academic part, but we're dealing with the social and uh, physical as well as health-wise uh, part of their curriculum and society. So I feel real good about that and I think that bringing the holistic learning environment to the campus was a great uh, achievement and I'm proud of the fact that the board allowed that to take place. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. It's been said that upon your hiring, it was important that the Board of Trustees allow you to implement the Center for Holistic Learning. Talk about that conversation you had with the Board and explain to our audience what the Holistic College model is. Well, the Holistic College model is one that takes into account all of the 
necessary tools that are required for you to live a successful life. And so one of the things that we did, we have several modules of this, what I call holistic learning environment. One was health, wellness, and fitness. And so when students come to the college, they are part of a health program. And we've said that when they stay here for four years, they graduate much healthier than they were when they came because they were exposed to a four-year health camp. Emergency response and first aid. We teach them first aid and uh, CPR and so that they're able to be uh, a, a, a kind of support system in wherever they are moving around. So we, that's what another part that we've dealt with. Political action and social responsibility is another module. And in that module, students are required to be re to register to vote if they are 18 years old or older. And we, we, we check that. If they come and they're not that, we give them 60 days or so as we work with them to get them registered to vote because we know that being a great a citizen, to be able to speak your mind and be able to get the government you deserve, you need to be a part of the voting population. So that's one of the other areas that we've dealt with. Uh, we will also talk about volunteerism and public service because we believe that we not only ask for support, but we also give support in public service. So we ask our students to do that as well. We talk about debt management and responsibility. We teach them how you know, credit cards and things of that nature uh, get us into trouble. And so one of the things we try to teach them is responsibility, debt management. And that's another part of the holistic learning environment. Uh, we, we think that we should have them also be a part of having a second language. So we put into the pro curriculum Spanish as a second language, and we expect students to be conversationally uh, Spanish capable when they graduate from the institution. So that's another part of what we think is important in this holistic learning environment. So we, we are very proud of the fact that the holistic learning environment deals with the what I call full well-roundedness of the students as opposed to just the academic part, but it gives them other, other abilities to interact in society and go forward and command their rightful place in a global society. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. We know a lot about Dr. Jenkins, the college president, but offer insight into who Jimmy Jenkins was growing up. We've heard that you really weren't interested in going to college at first. Tell us more about your childhood. Well, I can tell you that I was born as a middle child of seven children, uh, and uh, my parents were very, very high on education. My father died when I was 12 years old, and my mother was left to raise seven children, the youngest being 16 months old. And she, I remember her get, gathering us around her and saying that, uh, now children, me and God, is the how she put it, I'm gonna raise you. And so one of the things she would always say to us, she wanted us to be educated. She said, because if you can get it up here, she was speaking about it in your head, no one can take it from you. So, I was, so we, of course, all graduated from high school, and we all, but when I graduated from high school, I really didn't want to go to college. I wanted to, to go to New York, where I thought it was a place, uh, uh, what I thought it was the promised land, because back when I was growing up, of course, it was segregated society. You had to go to, when you went to the movies, you had to sit in the balcony. We called it the crow's nest. You couldn't eat at the lunch counters. You could not uh, sit in the front of the bus, and so, you know, in, in the South. But I noticed that when I went to North, lived with my aunt, who was my mother's sister, that I could go eat anywhere I wanted to in a restaurant. I could go sit into a movie wherever I wanted to be. I could also sit where I wanted to be on the bus. And so that seemed like the promised land for me. So when I graduated from high school, I told my mother I wanted to go to New York and get me a job and get my own apartment. And, but she was smart enough to know that with a high school education that that was not going to be possible for me to do that. But she agreed and allowed me to go to New York. So I went to New York and, uh, in the summer 
and to stay with my aunt, she said, now you can live with your aunt, with your aunt but you're going to have to pay her. You can't just live, on, live with her for free. So the first job I got when I got to New York was a, we'll call a handyman's job, working in with a construction company. And that, and you know, it's, it's hard red clay. You don't might not know that in New York, but it's hard red clay. And a handyman is a person who does whatever no one else wants to do. So they might give me a pick and tell me to do something or go get coffee or whatever the case might be. And that was all fine and good. But when I saw my check at the end of the week and looked at what I had to pay my aunt, looked at what I had to, for, for food, looked at for transportation, and then looked in the paper as to what they were charging for rooms and or apartment, it was clear to me that I was not going to be able to make to get that apartment with that job. Yes. So I moved on and got another job working in a restaurant and paid a little more, but when I looked at the end, at my paycheck at the end of the month, I realized I was not going to be able to, in fact, afford an apartment. And so I called my mother at the end of the summer and told her I, I wanted to go to college. So she said, well, you can come on back home. I'll be happy to support you going to college. And that's how I got into college because I was, I realized that the work I was doing with the qualifications that I had as a high school graduate would not allow me to support living in New York within, within, in an apartment. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. And now I truly understand where you uh, get that tenacity from and that uh, quote that you always state that education is the surest vehicle to upward mobility. And uh, I really understand now, and I hope that the public understands that, that, that true veracity that you possess here. Well, I, I can tell you that that's, that's very important for us to understand that education is the surest vehicle for upward mobility in the world. And I tell students oftentimes it's better than winning the lottery. Yes, sir. And they will look at me and we, you know, like it's a joke that I'm making. And I'll say to them, well, have you ever heard about the fact that a fool and his money are soon parted? And they look at that and they say, yes. I said, so if you have money but you don't have education, you won't know how to keep it. So education is the surest vehicle for upward mobility in the world. You're listening to Livingstone College's very first podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you for listening to Livingstone College's very first podcast featuring Dr. Jimmy R. Jenkins Sr., Jenkins Sr., our 12th president, in an intimate conversation with Dr. Lewis. Dr. Jenkins, since your retirement announcement, you've been honored with many accolades. Just last month, the CIAA inducted you into its Hall of Fame and will create a scholarship in your name. You already have two buildings named after you a science building at your alma mater, Elizabeth City State University, and an athletics complex at Edward Waters College in Jacksonville, Florida. You served as president as, at both of these colleges. What does all these accomplishments mean to you, and which one, if any, is most cherished? Well, I, I would have to say to you that it's surreal. If someone had told me when I was growing up as a child, you know, when I was growing up as a child, I, I picked cotton and, and, and I cropped tobacco. And you might not understand what that is because, you know, that's a, a Neanderthal kind of uh, activity now. But if someone had said to me that you will go, grow up and you will get an education, you will become a college president and they will name uh, buildings after you, I would have thought they must have been smoking something. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, it's surreal, and I'm excited about it. I, you know, God has been very good to me, and he has given me much. And I, I use that phrase a lot because I said, to those whom God has given much, much is required. And so for all that he has done for me, I feel that the least I could do is to try to give back and do what I need to do in order to help others along the way. So I am thankful for it, but it's a surreal kind of experience. I look on it as a third person and think I can't hardly believe 
that that's happening to me. But I'm thankful to God that I'm able to be able to make a contribution, to make a difference in the lives of people such that they recognize me in that way and are willing to honor me in, in that fashion. And that you have, Dr. Jenkins, that you have. Dr. Jenkins, where do you see Livingstone College in the next five years? Well, I think that Livingstone College is poised for greatness. I think that we are in a position where we will be able to have graduate programs. We've already submitted uh, to the uh, Southern Association uh, the request for graduate programs. I think in the next five years we'll have we'll be a, we'll have a graduate schools and we'll be able to, in fact, uh, change the name of the institution to Livingstone University. That's part of what we're proposing to do. And as we move forward, I can see the college having a moving in five years toward a 2,000 student enrollment. The pandemic has hit us in a way that, you know, we're having to recover from it. But I believe that as, as we are recovering, we will emerge from this pandemic much stronger than we were when the pandemic hit. So I think that and we'll have new facilities. We've just built a new science facility that we cut the ribbon on a few months, a month or so ago. Uh, we have reached, we're redoing our stadium and it's being worked on right now. And I can tell you that we expect that it will be a state of the art facility. Uh, I saw this, the digital scoreboard going up the other day. Uh, we also have closing in on a new health and physical education building that will go up in that in that same location. So we're building buildings and we're making a difference and I believe that we on our we're poised to be able to make the quantum leap forward to a level three institution and making sure that we can serve the needs of our community and the students that we serve. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. That is definitely productivity. And under your leadership, we really, really thank you and appreciate that because, as we know, most institutions or some institutions become stagnant. And so with your leadership, we want to thank you for taking Livingstone College to the next level. You've been here for 16 years, so uh, that is just amazing how you've just elevated Livingstone College and elevated the lives of students faculty, staff, and the community at large here. So, thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Well, let me just say that they, they say that time moves fast when you're having fun. And I've had a lot of fun uh, working with the people of this community and especially our students, faculty, and staff to build the programs that we are now uh, enjoying. And I feel comfortable in knowing that we are leaving the institution much better off and poised for greatness that we found it. And I'm thankful to the Board of Trustees for the confidence that they have uh, placed in me to be able to do what we've done. And for all of the other staff people who have worked diligently to carry out the vision that I was able to bring to this institution. So I'm excited about the future for Livingstone College. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Dr. Jenkins, if a graduating high school senior asked you why Livingstone? What would you say? I would say that, first of all, Livingstone is small enough to be personal. We get to know our students. Students will tell you they see me in the cafeteria, eating with the students, sitting at the tables. I get a lot of information by just being with them in settings such as that. They'll see me walking across the campus. I visit residence halls. I get to know a lot of students. and Many of them I know by first name. And so we're small enough to be personal, but we're large enough to offer whatever they want in terms of a career a pursuit. So we, you know, uh, that's what I would tell uh, a high, graduating high school senior, that we, they're coming to a place that's unique and very special established by the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church and we have a Judeo-Christian background in terms of the kind of environment we hope to foster on our campus. But we are here for all of our students and we have a, such a diverse population of students. Uh, so we are very excited about this. That's what I would tell the high school students. We have a lot going for them. You're listening to Livingstone College's very first podcast. We'll be right back after the break.
Thank you for listening. We will resume our conversation with Dr. Jim R. Jenkins, Sr., 12th President of Livingstone College. Dr. Lewis. Thank you, Ms. Harrington. And Dr. Jenkins, you said that you plan to spend more time with your family after you retire. I want to dive a bit deeper and ask, how do you envision your first month of retirement life? I think I would say to you that uh, my wife and I have been, been uh, liking in terms of being on vacation and doing kinds of things that, you know, and visiting some locations that uh, we have uh, dreamed of being a, a dream of being at. So I would say to you that we're looking forward to some travel. We'll take the first month probably just rest. Yes. And after that, then we'll start to work on the kind of travel that we need that we have uh, thought about over the, I will get our bucket list together and, and move in that direction. Thank you. Dr. Jenkins, this has just been great uh, and making history today. Um, would like to ask, do you have any closing remarks for us here uh, this t today here on this uh, historical moment? Well, I can tell you that uh, I'm excited about the future for this institution. I'm grateful to the uh, for the opportunity to have served here for 16 years. I'm grateful to the board for the confidence they have shared in me, and I hope that I have delivered as they have expected. And I look forward to continuing to be a part of the institution in some capacity. Uh, right now, we have not nailed down what it would be, but just to be a part of continuing the legacy of this institution and moving it forward in a very positive way is something that I look forward to. So I, I would say to you, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the relaxation, but at the same time, continuing to make a contribution. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed listening to Livingstone College's first podcast. As we said at the top of the program, you, our listeners today, are sharing in this historic occasion. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find our podcast on SoundCloud and the official Livingstone College YouTube channel for now. Future podcasts will be available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For more information about Livingstone College, visit livingstone.edu or follow us on all social media platforms at Livingstone1879. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins and Dr. Lewis. Thank you to our multimedia team, Mr. Keith Anderson and Mr. Preston Gillespie. I'm Kimberly Harrington. Until next time, have a great day.